A few days ago, we had a new release of Parrot Security OS. Parrot Security OS 4.0.1 was just released. It is a Debian-based Linux distribution. It is security-oriented. It is designed for penetration testing, reverse engineering, computer forensics, hacking, that sort of thing. So I thought I'd take a look at the newly released Parrot Security 4.0.1. I'm also going to take a look at Parrot Studio 4.0.1. Let's begin. So Parrot Security OS. Let me pull up distrowatch.com. Parrot Security OS based on Debian Buster. Buster is Debian's testing branch. So Parrot Security, reading a little bit from the blurb on DistroWatch, is a Debian-based security-oriented distribution featuring a collection of utilities designed for penetration testing, computer forensics, reverse engineering, hacking, privacy, anonymity, and cryptography. The product, developed by Frozenbox, comes with the Mate desktop as the default desktop environment. And as you can see, it's actually pretty popular according to DistroWatch. Its six-month popularity on the page hit rankings is... 36 so it's ranked 36 on distro watch that is pretty high and now i have actually been waiting for a new release of parrot os to come out for a while because i've got one viewer on the channel one of my most avid viewers actually a guy that goes by the name of mr f yourself very aggressive name pretty chill dude though <laughs> mr f his favorite Linux distribution is Parrot Security OS, and he has been asking me for a couple of months, all the time, hey, when are you going to take a look at Parrot? When are you going to take a look at Parrot? And about three weeks ago, I decided I was going to go ahead and take a look at it for him, so I downloaded the ISO. But being a rolling release, the ISO is really out of date. Running an update, there's over a thousand packages to update. It kept breaking the virtual machine I was trying to uh, do the review on. So I thought, well, maybe I would just do a live USB stick of Parrot Security. That particular version was 3.11. Well, I only have a 16 gig uh, USB sticks. I have several 16 gig USB sticks. And when I go to update Parrot OS 3.11 on the USB stick, because I need to update it so I can install something like OBS to stream from or record from inside the USB key, the USB keys would run out of space. So, I have actually been waiting patiently <laughs> for Parrot OS to come out with a new snapshot because it is a rolling release. They need to actually release very frequently. And looking at their release announcements here in DistroWatch, it seems they release, oh, almost every two months. Seems like two months, sometimes less than two months. There's a new release, but that last one, 3.11, was released back in January. It is May 29th, so very long time between releases this time. So that's that old snapshot was very old. And just a few days ago, I got word that Parrot 4.0 was released. This is the Parrot Security website here, their blog. We're going to go through the release notes, but one thing I want to note, that was about a week ago. Uh, I just noticed it three or four days ago that version 4.0 is out. DistroWatch does not know about it. There has not been a uh, release announcement on DistroWatch for Parrot Security 4.0.1. So, uh, luckily, I, I caught somebody posting something on Reddit or, or somewhere about the uh, Parrot 4.0. Otherwise, I would not have known that it was out. Anyway, I'm going to go to the Parrot website here. You go to Downloads. You have the options of their flagship product, of course, is Parrot Security. That is what they're known for is their hacking and penetration testing distro here. So I'm going to download that. They also offer a home slash workstation edition for those that, like me, don't know anything about all these forensic tools. Really, I just want a, a, a standard desktop, you know, Linux distribution. Well, they do offer the home edition, 64-bit. They also offer what is called Parrot Studio for multimedia production. So I, actually, I'm going to pull down both the security edition and the studio edition, because for somebody like me that makes a lot of videos and does a lot of audio and video production, I want to check out what their studio edition has to offer. So I'm going to pull down both ISOs. The studio edition is 2.6 gigs in size, 
and the security edition. Let's see what how big that one is. 3.6 .6 gigs in size. So not small ISOs, either one of them. I'm going to install this inside VirtualBox. And just quickly reading through some of the release notes. Uh, the release announcement does mention that there was a bit of time between this particular release of Parrot and the last one. It's because they had quite a bit of work to do. Looks like they've added some experimental net install images. I'm not going to do a net install, but net install images are a powerful tool to install only the bare core of the system or just the software components you really need. So think of something like Debian's mini install. Matter of fact, being based on, on Debian, they may be using one of Debian's uh, net installers. Uh, Docker images. They're glad to announce the official release of their Docker templates. Docker is, of course, extremely popular these days. They're going to be using the latest Linux kernel, version 4.16 or at least that was the very latest that was out a week ago when this was uh, shipped. I'm not sure if there's been a kernel release since then. Uh, sandboxing, the Parrot system is known to be secure and sandbox thanks to its custom fire gel profiles with the underlying app armor support. Mate 1.20 is the desktop environment of choice here. Uh, Nginx, that's an interesting selection. So Apache 2 is usually uh, what people put on web servers, the Apache server. They're choosing to go with Nginx. LibreOffice 6, Firefox 60, RAID support, yada, yada, yada. All right, so let me get this up and running here in a VM. Well, guys, I cannot get this thing to boot up in a VM. Uh, just booting the live ISO. You see one of the things I get here, okay, 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 and then I get failed. Failed to start light DM, the light display manager. So I can't even like check out the live desktop environment or anything. Uh, you know what I might do? I might just go ahead and go ahead and burn both the uh, Parrot OS security edition to a USB stick. I'm also going to burn the Parrot Studio edition to a USB stick. And I'm going to review both of them as live USB keys. The install process, uh, I guess you guys won't get to check that out, at least on this review. So here I am. I have loaded up Parrot Security OS inside a live environment on a live USB key. And initial impressions loading up the desktop here. This, of course, is the Mate desktop, Mate 1.20. Uh, it is a bit strange. I really love the wallpaper, by the way, the Parrot with the like exploding flames behind him or whatever that's going on. Really great wallpaper. Uh, the Mate theme though, the panels, it's kind of strange. Why do I have two panels? I have a top panel and a bottom panel. They look like they're essentially doing the same thing. Both of them have menus. I have a menu system in the bottom panel. And then I have this menu system, your standard applications, places, systems, the old GNOME 2 like menu at the top. I am not sure why I would need that. I'm not even sure why I would need two different panels. I think I could probably just make one panel, have a menu system, have the taskbar, have the sysstray all on one panel and get rid of a lot of the extra cruft here but I'm not gonna play around with that, not on this live USB key. Uh, I'm just gonna leave the panels at least as is. I am gonna go through the menu and show you some of what is installed by default on Parrot Security OS. Now keep in mind I am not a security oriented kind of guy. I don't know anything about penetration testing or commu computer forensics. I'm not a hacker, not any of that. So I cannot tell you anything about any of the programs on this particular distro, which is why I also made a USB key for Parrot Studio. I'm going to take a closer look at this one here in just a second, but I just wanted to show you a little of what is on Parrot Security OS 4.0.1. Under administration, you have print settings, you have the synaptic package manager, time and date, user groups. And then you have a, a category called a non surf. So, anonymous surf, I guess. A non surf start. Let's see if I click that, what happens? Get a terminal starting a non surf start. I don't know. Am I surfing the web anonymously now? I don't know. It says killing dangerous apps. Hope it doesn't kill anything related to this recording. Guess I better play this recording back later and see. And you know what? I better just shut that down. Anyway, so some anonymous stuff. Uh, cryptography. We have 
GPA, Siri, Kali, Zulu Crypt, Zulu Mount, games. We only have one game, X Board. Looks like it's a chess game. Yeah. Also, we have graphics. Uh, Eye of Mate, Image Magic, the Mate color selection tool. Uh, graphics, uh, internet. We have Claws Mail. That's an interesting email client. Uh, nobody really uses Claws Mail. I'm not sure why they would include something like Claws Mail on the ISO. Thunderbird would have been a much better choice. We have the Electrum Bitcoin wallet. We have Firefox. This will be Firefox uh, version 60, Quantum. We have HexChat for our I IRC chat client. I'm assuming it probably would connect us to the Parrot OS support channels. I'm not sure. I'm not going to connect though. Also under internet we have uh, Onion Circuits, Onion Share, so we can do some uh, Tor stuff here. We have the Tor Browser actually. Watch the Tor Browser. That might take a minute to load. The Tor Browser can be kind of slow to load up sometimes. Actually it's downloading and installing Tor Browser for the first time. I'm going to cancel that because I'm on a live USB key. It's only 16 gigs and Parrot Security OS is kind of big anyway. I don't know how much room is left on this USB key. I already had to install Simple Screen Recorder to record this. Uh, so I'm not sure how much space is left on the disk. Office. We have a ton of Office programs installed by default. Abbey Word, Actual Document Viewer, Document Viewer, GNU Merrick, Home Bank, Keep Note, the entire LibreOffice suite, Base, Calc, Draw, Impress, Math, and Writer. We have Mate Dictionary, we have a Planner, and then we have View Your Mind. That is interesting. They have so many Office programs installed by default. We have a Parrot category, and this is the very big subcategory. This is where you find all your hacking, computer forensics, pen testing stuff here. I have no idea what any of these programs are, what they do. Again, this is not my wheelhouse. I'm going to leave that alone. Not even going to play around with that stuff. I would just be guessing what any of that stuff does anyway. All right, under uh, sound and video, we have MPV for our media player, Pulse Audio Volume Control I installed to make this recording uh, to help me out getting my microphone and webcam set. Simple Screen Recorder, I also installed that. VLC is installed by default. Voco Screen for Webcam, which is this here, was already installed by default as well. And then we have our Control Center. I'm not going to play around much with the settings and the Control Center. I may do that actually in Parrot Studio. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys very briefly Parrot Security again. It's not something I can properly review. I, I don't have those kinds of skills, but let me go ahead and fire up Parrot Studio 4.0.1 on a live USB key. Let's take a look at that. And now I am inside Parrot Studio 4.0.1. Looks exactly the same as far as the look and feel of Parrot Security. So we still have the Parrot wallpaper, the really, really cool wallpaper. Still have the same Mate theme. We still have two panels bottom panel with a menu and a taskbar top panel with the application places system old school gnome 2 menu at the top some quick launchers and some system info here and our sys tray and our clock uh, here down here it looks like we have a uh, automatic sleep enabled we also have our workspace switchers looks like we have four workspaces by default all right and just like parrot Security and Parrot Studio, I installed a simple screen recorder to make this recording. I also had to install Voco Screen, which is the webcam program. Now, Voco Screen was installed by default in Parrot Security. It is not installed on Parrot Studio, which is interesting being a webcam app. It was installed in Security, but not in Studio. But anyway, let me go through the menu here and show you some of what is installed in Parrot Studio 4.0.1. Under Accessories, we have Compton for our compositing, and Grandpa, the Archive Manager, GPA, KeyPass, the Mate Calculator, the Mate font, font Viewer, Mate Search Tool, Play on Linux for you know getting your Wine games up and running, Pluma, which is the text editor in Mate, Redshift, which uh, is Color Temperature Adjustment Tool, it's supposed to help with sleep patterns and stuff, adjusting the color of your monitor. Uh, t we have our screenshot utility and we have wine tricks, more wine stuff. I really hate wine, but for those that have to run Windows-only programs and want to try it out in wine, it's there for you. 
Me, personally, I would either just dual boot Windows if you have to run Windows programs or install Windows in a VM. You'll be much happier than trying to use Wine. Wine is pretty horrible. Under administration, we have print settings, the synaptic package manager again, time and date, user and groups. A lot of the same stuff we saw in Parrot Security. Cryptography, got a few different things here. Let's see. Now we just have GPA. Under education, we have a little more stuff than what we had in security. We have GeoGebra. I'm not sure what that is. Calcium, Stellarium, and TK Gate Circuit Simulator. Games, we have Xborg again. Uh, graphics. Well, okay, now we have a little bit more stuff than what we had in the security edition. Here in the studio edition, we have Blender for doing 3D animations. Dark Table, which is for your uh, camera, your digital images. Actually, I, I launched the wrong program. That's the Eye of Mate. That's our image viewer there. We launched Dark Table here. That's launching on the wrong monitor. Here in the live USB key, I have a three monitor system, of course, so it it's opened on three monitors, but I'm only recording the middle monitor, the second of the three. Anyway, this is dark table. All right, and back to graphics. We also had image magic. We have Inkscape, of course, Krita, Mate color selection, Scribus, and Shotwell. Shotwell is another photo management utility. Shotwell. It's kind of a default program on a lot of Linux distros out there. Took a minute to load there. I clicked on it and it took a good five seconds for Shotwell to load there. I'm not sure. Again, and this is a live environment. It's not actually installed. This is Shotwell 0.26.4. Shotwell Photo Manager. You guys that do a lot of uh, stuff with photography, take a lot of pictures. A program like Shotwell really helps in keeping things organized. And does some simple editing. Internet. We have Claws Mail again for email. Horrible, horrible email client. But I can already tell you where Parrot Security only had Claws Mail for email client. Way down here at the bottom, Parrot Studio Thunderbird. <laughs> yeah, much better. And we also have Electrum Bitcoin Wallet, Firefox. Oh, that's Firefox 60 again. Quantum Hex Chat again. Most of the same stuff we saw before, other than Thunderbird. I don't think Thunderbird was in security. All right, under the office category, same as before with security, Studio has a ton of office programs. EbbyWord, Actual, Document Viewer, GNU, GNU Merrick, Home Bank, the entire LibreOffice suite, Ponte Dictionary, Planner, View Your Mind. And we have the Parrot category. Now in Parrot Security, this was a gigantic uh, category of pen testing tools and various hacking utilities and whatnot. Uh, there's not much in this category here in Parrot Studio. We have IP utils and record my desktop. Preferences, this is your standard Mate preferences. This is for things like appearance, Bluetooth, display, keyboard, mouse, that sort of thing. Under programming, we have Atom. Well, very nice. Atom is a nice IDE and it's an Electron app. So it does take a minute to launch. For some reason, all these Electron apps, when you click on them, they can take, you know, sometimes five, ten seconds to launch. It actually launched finally on the other monitor, but Adam has a really nice IDE. Kind of patterned after Sublime, for those familiar with, with that particular IDE. Let's go back to programming. We have Fritzing, Genie, which is one of my favorite text editors. I love Genie, and Zill, which is a simple API documentation browser. All right, under sound and video, because this is really geared toward multimedia production, we have Audacity, which is a fantastic audio editor. I use it to edit the audio for my channel. Brazero, a disc burning utility. Flowblade, Handbrake, which is for transcoding DVD, Blu-ray, other media. Caden Live, which is my favorite free and open source video editor, is what I use to edit most of my videos. Caden Live. Uh, at least some of the more complex ones. Uh, some of the simpler stuff I do, I can just do with FFmpeg in the command line. But really, once you get into some advanced stuff, you're doing a lot of editing, a lot of clipping, uh, especially when you're putting together, you know, like video clips and audio, it, you know, trying to put some of that stuff together. A program like Caden Live is, is really what you need. Let me go ahead and launch it, show you guys what I'm talking about here with Caden Live your standard video editor. 
Let's see, about Caden Live version 17.12.3. Caden Live is also available as an app image for those that need the latest version, although since this is based on Debian testing, that's probably a pretty recent release of Caden Live. Also under sound and video, we have Lightworks. We have LL, LMMS, which is the Linux Multimedia Suite. This is really neat program. I played around with it a little bit some years back. It's really nice for creating like a, you know, MIDI tracks and things like that. Let's see. Not the most attractive looking program, but, but really neat, really powerful program. Easy music production for everyone. You got your mixer, your beat and baseline editor, your song editor. So really some some neat stuff here for multimedia. We have Mix, which is a digital DJ, DJ interface. We have MPV again, Pulse Audio Volume Control, I installed, Rhythm Box for our, our uh, audio player, which is the standard music player in the GNOME desktop environment. Rhythm Box, really nice. We have VLC, Simple Screen Recorder I installed, Voco Screen I installed, WinFF, I'm not sure what that is, that's a GUI for AV, CONV, I'm not sure what that's about, then Zen Add Sub, what is that, a powerful real-time uh, synthesizer, okay. And we have options for beginner and advanced, I don't know anything about that, so I'm just going to close it, but some really neat stuff, especially for audio, I mean there's some good video stuff in here, but... Uh, really good stuff for audio production. Under system tools, we have our standard stuff. A lot of the same stuff we saw in Parrot Security, BleachBit, Kaja, which is the file manager, GW, Gpart at HTOP, etc., etc. Then we have the control center. Now, I didn't play around much with the settings and stuff in Parrot Security because I knew I'd probably play around with a lot of this stuff looking at Studio. It's all going to work the same way. For example, are there any wallpapers other than this really cool parrot wallpaper, which I like? I actually would probably just leave the default wallpaper. That is a really, really neat default wallpaper. But you know what? They got some other cool stuff here, too. Is that a ship in a bottle? Oh, really cool. I'm not sure this is their own wallpaper pack or something that is uh, packaged for Monte. I'm assuming... Since it's security related, it seems, you know, kind of hackerish stuff. And then you got some Parrot stuff. This is probably a wallpaper pack specific for the Parrot distribution. Really neat stuff, actually. That's a pretty cool Parrot photo. I would like that if I had a light GTK theme with a dark GTK theme. It's a little too dark. There are no real light wallpapers here. Everything is kind of dark. So, wish they had a little bit more variety. You know what? That's a really nice parrot there. I'd go with that. Again, I'd probably want to change the theme. I probably can change the theme, though. If I go to Appearance, is there a light theme available for me? Of course, we have Arc. We have Arc Snow. Let's see what that's about. And yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that. Let's see, what else we have? Blue Menta. Blue Menta is really nice. I've used it before. Blue Graybird. You know what? I really like the Arc Snow. Let's go to that. Let's go to Customize. Let's see, Window Borders all look good. Can we change the icons? Let me open up Kaja so we can actually see what's going on here with the icons. So this is the Kaja File Manager, the standard file manager in Mate. And for icons we have the options of something like the Breeze icon set, which is really nice. Really nice blue icon set. Maya, which is a really nice green icon set. I really like that one. I think that was set by default anyway. You know what? I think I'll I'll stick with the green. Nah, you know what? Breeze dark. Breeze dark because we have a dark panel, so some of those icons are gonna work better with our dark panel. Yeah, I can live with it. And that is my very brief look at both Parrot Security 4.0.1 and Parrot Studio 4.0.1. Again, 
Parrot Security in particular is not my kind of distro. I don't know anything about, you know, a lot of this security oriented stuff, uh, computer forensics, pen testing, hacking, any of that. It's not my wheelhouse, so I can't properly review it. So again, this was just a very brief overview, basically a first look at both Parrot Security and Parrot Studio. Parrot Studio, though, I will say it looks really nice for those that are into multimedia production. Uh, I'm not sure if I would say it's, you know, as good a distro as something like Ubuntu Studio, um, certainly, probably not, because that distro is just loaded down with everything you need for audio creation, video creation, even writing, that sort of thing, photography. But Parrot Studio is really nice, and it did have a mixture of some pen testing kind of stuff to it. It wasn't loaded down the way Parrot Security was. But overall, uh, the distro looks like a fine distro, again, based on Debian testing. So it is rolling release. It's not exactly going to be the most stable distro. Uh, one negative is I just could not get these things to install in a VM. I couldn't actually look at the live ISO in a VM. The live ISO, I couldn't boot into it like DM would load. When I went through the install process, because I did try to install Parrot Security in a VM. I went through the installation process. It's your standard Debian installer, you know, kind of a, uh, it's a graphical installer, but it's kind of like an incurses installer, the Debian installer. Went through the Debian installer a million times. No big deal. But on reboot, nothing happens. It hangs. Uh, it's not a grub problem. It gets past the grub screen, but when you get to the where it starts launching services and it says, okay, 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 it gets to one part mentioning something about UMTP and it just hangs and it hangs forever. And there's nothing I can do about it. So I could not get these to install in a VM. I really wanted to go through the install process with you guys. But you guys, if you've ever been through a Debian install, you guys have seen me do Debian installs on the channel before. The install, pretty straightforward. Anyway, overall, I give Parrot Security and Parrot Studio an A. Before I go, I do need to give a special thanks to my patrons, all my Patreon supporters. A.K. Ron, Mr. Neely Pops, John, Brian, Carl, Greg, Carlos, Rob, Matt, Darkwin, Mark, Christian, Jake, Benjamin, Stephen B., Stephen Z., Marcus, Interceptor, Bob, Leor, Omar, Silvio, David, Alex, Bruno, Mike, Daniel, Nick, Eduardo, David, Antonio, and Michael. You guys are awesome. You guys help make this show possible. Peace, guys.